All right, so this is gonna be a video. I'm just gonna go over a little bit of uh, talk about corner balancing and wedge tuning. Uh, when it comes to setting up the scales, now this is critical. When it comes to setting up the scales, uh, you need to have them leveled out with a, with a, a, a level. Because if you don't have a, the scale set up correctly, everything we're doing here is basically to waste. It's not gonna be properly balanced and you're, you're not gonna be adjusting the numbers correctly. What I do is, or especially this time is, I've put some duct tape to basically hold the scales in position so that they're not sliding around, moving around, and that where I have them leveled out is exactly where they are during the entire time I'm making my adjustments. When it comes to this type, type of tuning, uh, one of the real pains in the butt is that uh, you need to have the body on. Because once you have the body on, it's gonna change the weight balance. And uh, with the body on is how we're actually racing the cars. So you, you want the car exactly the way it's gonna be when you're putting it down on the line to run a race, to, to, to make these adjustments. And the pain in the ass with that is that you're gonna have to take the body off to make an adjustment, put the body back on, take the body off to make an adjustment, put the body back on. So it's very, very important that like you have a procedure that doesn't uh, have you picking the RC up and shaking it all. You wanna do as, min as little messing with the RC as it's sitting as possible. And when you do, uh, when you do get the uh, the adjustments changed and the body back on, you kind of want to tap it down to make sure that it uh, is going to read itself correctly. And it it takes a couple of seconds for the, the springs and everything to to reset themselves the way they're the way they were initially. If you're looking at the uh, scales right now, you're going to see these two numbers here, 50-50. This is the corner balance. This is basically the combined weight of these two corners here and these two corners here and then the percentages of the balance between the two of them represented here and here <clears throat> obviously here and here this is the uh the front to weight front to front to rear weight balance uh, when you have 50 50 here and here this is what's called neutral wedge when you start adding wedge into the chassis what's going to happen is these numbers are going to um, uh, increase and decrease. So this one will go up, this one will go down. And if this one's higher than this one, that's gonna be positive wedge. If this one's lower than this one, that's gonna be negative wedge. So positive wedge and negative wedge are gonna uh, give the car better grip in a certain direction. Uh, when it comes to uh, this setup, I posted a picture of my car in a neutral setup like this. Just uh, going over some of the details before I get ready to uh, uh, set the car out. And I had a comment about more weight being on one side of the car than the other side of the car. Having the equal weight on one side versus the other side is not as important as people think. The reason for this is uh, the two front sides affect the opposite rear sides. So the front right, the weight of the front right is what's gonna impact the grip on the, the rear, sorry, the front left is gonna impact the weight on the rear right and vice versa. The front left weight is gonna impact, sorry, the front right weight is gonna impact the rear left. So it's, it's not the, a linear weight transfer where the front right wheel's weight is going to directly transfer to the the rear right wheel's weight it doesn't actually work like that uh, the balance and uh, relationship between the corners that is more connected is going to be the cross corners so if you'll notice uh, if you increase or decrease the ride height on let's say the uh, front left. This is gonna have a, a larger impact on the rear right than anywhere else. So it's gonna have a slight impact on everything else, but the larger impact is gonna be on this corner here. That's why when you're actually doing the corner balancing, when you're trying to adjust for a particular wheel, you do most of your adjustments on the opposite wheel, not the wheel you want to affect. So if you want to increase the weight over here, you make your adjustments on this side over here. So 
when it comes to uh, you know having all the weight on one side, personally, in my opinion, I don't think that's important at all. I think it's more important to have the cross balance weight better set up. So as you can see here, the front left is heavier than my front. Uh, sorry, my front right is heavier than my front left. But at the same time, my rear left is lighter than the uh, rear right. So the weight, the extra weight from this side here is going to compensate for the, the, the lack of weight on this side over here and vice versa. So I mean, when it comes to um, making sure you have all your weight on one side versus the other, uh, I'll be honest, I don't think you need to really waste your time on that. The key focus at first for dialing the chassis in for initial tuning, initial tuning on the street is going to be a 50-50 corner balance. So this way your, your car has a neutral wedge. So when you're tuning it, the, the wedge you want to tune on the street is going to be only the wedge that you absolutely need depend based on how the car is reacting. So I mean, these are the, 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 the kinds of the things that you're going to be wanting to adjust inside here. But when it comes to uh, corner balancing and wedge tuning, most of the actual tuning is done on the street. You don't you don't make an adjustment on the scale, and then you don't you don't do a hit on the street, bring it back on the scale, make an adjustment on the scale, then bring it back to the street to make another hit. You're making all your hits on the street entirely based on what the car is doing. So once you dialed the car in where it's going straight on the street, you put the car back on the scales. These these corner balances are going to be off. So then you're going to see well what kind of wedge does this car chassis need this car needs a positive wedge this car needs a negative wedge so I mean this is really a, I guess more of a data acquisition more of a learning your chassis and learning what's going on with your chassis and what works with your chassis versus uh, more of a blind tuning so yeah I hope this video was helpful uh, if, if you like the content give it a like uh, if you don't like my videos, give me a thumbs down because I'm a goofball. What do I know anyways? And uh, at the end of the day, if you do want to see more of this content, please subscribe. It's helping me out. Uh, I do need, I'm do. i trying to build my channel up as much as I can. So please give me uh, as much feedback and comments and helpful tips as to how I can make my videos better. And I'll try and incorporate them uh, into the future. I don't know if you guys know, noticed, but... Uh, initially, I got some comments on my lighting being not so good, my, 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 the locations of where I was filming not being so good, so I've been making steps in each video trying to make them better. I hope you guys can see the progression, and please continue to give me more tips to, to make these videos better in the future. Uh, it is a, a, basically a hobby in and of itself, and I'm, I'm learning as I'm going. I do appreciate all the support for the channel. Have yourself a good day, and enjoy RC.